Certainly, Michael. Hang on. Hi, Paul. Hiya. You're only asking what the show's about today, is there? Huh? I've read the script, haven't I? You're going to make me fatter. No, not fatter, fitter. It's all about fitness. Oh. You see, and these are no good for you. No good at all. morning. Today, Chuckle Vision looks at physical fitness and how to get it. I'm going to take a perfectly ordinary person and in no time at all, through physical exercise, turn him into a magnificent example of manhood. Now, over here, we have a perfectly ordinary person. <coughs> What's that you're eating? It's hamburger, isn't it? How many times have I told you? Fast food's no good for you. That certainly was fast. Look at the state of you. You're a physical wreck, a complete disaster. Mm. You don't smoke, do you? I get a bit hot sometimes. Oh. My exclusive health and fitness programme will make a new man of this pathetic specimen. Hey, and I tell you what, what? it might even make you more attractive to the girls. Will it? But it'll make you feel better. I'm going to put this specimen through an intensive course of exercise and at the end of it, he won't even recognise himself. Hey, well, that's no good. If I can't recognise myself, how will I know it's me? I tell you what, I'll take a picture of you now, mm -hmm. then we'll take another photograph of him at the end of the programme and we'll put the two photographs together and see the difference that it's made. Now, you go and stand in front of the camera and I'll take a picture of you. OK. Go on, get up. Here we have a perfectly ordinary camera. And over there, we have a perfectly ordinary specimen. Right, take your dressing gown off, I'm going to take a picture of you. Right. Where have you gone? I'm here. Where, where, hey? I'm here. Oh, well, you're going to have to jump about a bit and move, cos I can't see you through here. OK, then. Right. right. Oh, how's that? All right. Ah, that's better. Good. Right, hold still. <laughs> Got it. Right, go and get your tracksuit on and we'll jog down to the chemist with this film. OK, then. Now. And now we come to the first part of my regime. This is designed to simply get the specimen warmed up and not to overtax him unduly. And for this, you'll need the skipping rope. <sighs> ah, here you are. You'll need this. I don't want that. Well, please yourself. Right, yeah. after me. Knees bend, arms stretch. <laughs> Knees bend, arms stretch. <laughs> Knees bend, up. Can I have the skipping rope? I told you, didn't I? He knows. Right. Follow me on the spot, jogging. And after me, come on. What? Hey, Barry. Well, I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Have you ever done any boxing? Any boxing, me? Yeah. I was a flyweight champion at our school. Oh, yeah? I beat two nuts in a blue bottle. Oh. Oh, it's that time. Eh? Come on, we've got to get down to Barney's gym. How can Barney be gym? No, Barney's not gym. Barney's got a gym. Oh, working for him, you mean? No, you haven't got it, have you? Look, just follow me down to the gym. I'm looking forward to meeting Barney. And Jim. It's good in here, isn't it? Yeah. Look all this equipment. Where's Barney? Oh, he's had to pop out of a minute, but he said it's all right. We can use anything we want. All this stuff? Hey, he's got a jacuzzi through there. Has he? Yeah. Can I go and stroke it? No, you haven't got time. Come on, get fit. OK. <laughs> well, 
Well, that's the first part of our training session over, and we've got our specimen coming towards the peak of fitness. How do you feel? Dreadful. Good, because we'll soon be into the second part of our course. In the meantime, why don't you sit back and relax for a while and watch Armchair Theatre? What are you doing? That's my chair. Get out. I sit there. There was only one thing Timmy hated more than school, and that was Sarah Jane Daly. He really hated her. She used to make him do all of her homework, because Sarah Jane had the intellect of a squashed fly. Mind you, don't get me wrong, he wasn't the only one to suffer at her hands. Timmy's days at school were hell, until the day his cousin Alfie came to stay. Cousin Alfie arrived on Sunday with one bag of clothes and three cases of books. By Sunday evening, he was driving Timmy mad. He was into proverbs to describe faults, and it looked as if he'd swallowed the whole book. However, when he got out of helping with dinner by pointing out that too many cooks spoil the broth, Timmy started to wonder if perhaps there wasn't more to Alfie than met the eye. This suspicion was confirmed when trying to put the wind up Alfie, he described Sarah Jane. Hmm, interesting, he said. You won't see that when you see her tomorrow, snapped Timmy. If I were you, I'd take a crash course in weightlifting or something. I've seen more muscle on a gnat's wing. Comparisons, said Alfie coldly, are odious. And that was that for the rest of the evening. The following morning, Timmy set off for school with Alfie in tow, literally. His nose was buried so deep into a book that Timmy had to tow him along in order to avoid any accidents. There was uproar as they approached the playground. Some fool had beaten Sarah Jane at marbles and was now being strangled with their own tie. Suddenly, a reedy, thin voice punctured the air. It was Alfie's, and it said, it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. The silence that followed was so quiet, you could hear the 855 take off from speak. Sarah Jane turned to see a pint-sized Alfie gazing at her with a calm eye. You've got to admit it, for a wet, Alfie could be pretty dry. Sarah Jane rambled over to him and said, Oi, you. Yes, squeaked Alfie. What do you want? What do I want? said Sarah Jane. A little respect for a start, you undernourished looking peanut. Respect, said Alfie. Has to be end. And put me down or you'll start me asthma off. Listen, four eyes, button your lip or you'll be today's four o'clock punch bag. All right, said Alfie. Sarah Jane was flabbergasted. Here was something not much bigger than an earthworm challenging her, and with confidence too. An unpleasant thought flashed across her not often used mind. Maybe he knew something she didn't, but the challenge had been made. OK, Shorty, four o'clock it is. You're for it now, Alfie, said Timmy. What did you think she'd do? Back down? I'm working on a plan of action, said Alfie. And with that, they went inside to morning lessons. It was at lunchtime that Alfie made his first move. He was watching Sarah Jane pile a plate up with chips. Plate of cabbage, please. Thank you. Said Alfie to the dinner lady, and then to the world in general. All great fighters eat greens. Cabbage is to me what spinach is to Popeye. It's full of vitamins and it builds up your strength. A little of this goes a long way. Here, hey, love, said the dinner lady. If you like it that much, you can have the rest. And she put it in a jar and gave it to Alfie. All afternoon, the only thing anybody could smell was Alfie's green cabbage. He kept scooping bits of it into his mouth while the teacher wasn't looking, and Sarah Jane was. He even offered her some. Yeah, I wonder what you think I was taking unfair advantage of you, he said. Sarah Jane paled, and I don't think it's because of the smell of the cabbage. Listen, Shorty, she said, I, uh, I don't want your death on my conscience. So I've decided to call the whole thing off till you've had time to do a little weight training. Never put off till tomorrow what can be done today, said Alfie. Don't worry about me, I've got my cabbage. At four o'clock, they were all gathered in the playground. Listen, Alfie, said Sarah Jane, making one last ditch attempt to call the whole thing off. I'm gonna let you off out of the goodness of me heart. 
Little Alfie pushed his glasses further up his nose. It's easy to be wise after the event. Let's sort the matter out here and now. Pass me my jar of cabbage. We'll have a little snack before the whole business starts. But Sarah Jane had gone. But no good coward had slipped away. After her, they roared. And they all trooped off to find Sarah Jane. She was waiting at the bus stop. I've decided that fighting's stupid. I decided to give it up in favour of something more non-violent, like knitting. And she got on the bus. Alfie, said Timmy, I don't know how you did it. There are many ways to win a war, Alfie said loftily. I used my head instead of my fists. Underneath all of her bravado, Sarah Jane, like most bullies, is just a coward. He took a deep breath. They all waited for the lecture to come to a stunning finish. But instead, Alfie went paler by the second. Are you all right? Timmy asked. No, Alfie said. This is an example of one man's meat is another man's poison. Where's the nearest bathroom? I ate green cabbage. Welcome back. And now for part... Get off me wire. Sorry. Now for part two of my health and fitness regime, which incidentally is also available on video cassettes from all good DIY shops. In this second part of the regime, we get the specimen into the peak of fitness. Now, over here, we have some perfectly ordinary apparatus. Just a minute. Oh. Haven't you gone the wrong way around? Perhaps you're right. <laughs> No, no, mine looks heavier than yours. No, I don't think so. No. But it's bigger. Ah, oh, well, you see, I don't really need it, do I? I'm already fit. It's you we've got to get fit. Oh, now, me. look, here, you put these gloves on, and I'll put these gloves on here. What are these for? Oh, these are lifting gloves. Oh, are they? Especially for lifting, yeah. It makes you get a grip, you see, and you don't drop the bar. Oh. Right, now, you just watch this. What I do, I get hold the bar like that, and lift it up like that, and then push it over my head, back down like that, and onto the floor like that. Easy, isn't it? I can't do that. Why not? Mine's much too heavy. No, not if you use your legs. I'll never get it above my head with my legs. No, no, not like that. I... Use your legs like this. You bend your legs and push with your legs like that. Oh, I see. Yes, now have a go. I'll go have on. a go, have right. A go. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Uh, well, uh, it's over to our uh, medical correspondent, Simon Lovell. What am I going to do now? Well, you'll have no problem shining your shoelace in the morning, will you? Medical expert? I don't know anything at all about medicine, well, apart from doctors wear white coats. However, I did used to have an uncle who was an optician, good old Uncle Albert, but he was a bit of a cheat, and if you promise not to tell anyone, I'll show you how he conned people into buying glasses. He used to have a sheet of newspaper, which he'd unwrap and show inside to have a red block of wood. He'd ask the person to remember the colour of the wood, fold up the paper, and then say, what's that over there? When they look round, he'd rather sneakily turn the paper over. He'd then ask them what colour they'd seen, and when they said red, he'd open up the paper and say, no, it wasn't, it was blue. <coughs> Didn't tell them about the other bit of wood on the other side. However, I asked him one day, Uncle, what would happen if somebody turned round too soon and caught you turning over the piece of paper and realised that, in fact, you had two blocks of wood? He said, well, then, my boy, what I'd do, I'd wrap up the paper, snap my fingers over the top, make the other piece of wood vanish, and still sell them the glasses. Anyway, back to Barry's medical problem, because I'm getting into this medical frame of mind now. Arms too long, what you need is lots of arm exercise. Skipping. And as it so happens, Baz, we have here a skipping rope. The only problem you'll have, though, mate, is with your arms a bit long, you'll probably find that the ends will trail underneath. So, what you've got to do, my man, is snip a bit off it. Give yourself two separate skipping ropes, and when they flail round and round, your arms will get shorter and shorter. If it's still a bit long, you can always uh, trim off a few more bits. It's just a... Uh, trim a few bits off. And when your arms actually get back to normal length, what you'll be able to do then is use a bit of magic, put your skipping rope all back into one piece. 
Who says I'm not a medical expert? Here we go with a bit of skipping. Salt, vinegar, mustard, cucumber sandwiches, HP sauce. Ah. Back to the studio. Well, that's as maybe. But now on to part three of my physical exercise scheme. This is where we really put it to the test, test and see how fit my subject has become. He's, become. He's now going to go ten rounds, ten rounds with the mighty Mike Muscles Malone. Muscles Malone. Hey, hey, you never told me about this. Oh, don't worry, it'll be a walkover. Yeah, and it'll be me he walks over. No, no, you're worrying unnecessarily. Uh, how tall is he? Oh, he's about... Oh, he's not very tall. Well, is he smaller than me? Parts of him are, yeah. Oh, that's all right, then. Right. Now, this is where you've got to do some more exercises and get warmed up. Right. <laughs> you call that warming up? No, I call it Nigel. Don't be stupid. Careful. No, all you've got to do is get warmed up. I showed you the physical jerks. Look. Oh, yeah. Hum, hum, he, hum, hum, he, hum, hum, he, he hum, he, hum, he, hum, he, hum. He, That's he, it. Hum. <coughs> right. Now, he... Right, here, you'll need this. No, I don't need that anymore. My trousers are all right now. No, no, this is to skip. You hey. know, salt, vinegar, mustard, pepper. No, I only like prone cocktail. Hey? Crisps. No, skip, skip! I can't skip, only girls skip. Just a minute. Would you call Mike Tyson a girl? Only if he was far enough away. I don't know, really. No, look, take that away. Go on, go and get ready. Go and okay. get ready. And now it's over to Barney's gym for what I'm sure you'll agree is a very interesting experiment. Here we are. Over here, over here. Where, where? Look, where? Over here. That's it. What? Is that him? Yeah, that's him. I don't like the look of him. Oh, don't worry. He probably doesn't like the look of you either. But you said he was smaller than me. Well, he is when he's sitting down. Aye, oh, hey. He's turning ugly. Don't worry about it. He's not half the man you are. Isn't he? No. Great. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, I'll introduce you. OK, how do you do, please? Not that kind of introduce. Sit in the corner. What? My lords, ladies and gentlemen, the main bout of the day between, on my left, in the blue shorts and weighing in at 2,000 pounds, the mighty Mike Muscles Malone. And on my right, wearing the yellow streak down his back and weighing in at 2 pound 50, battling Barry, one of the few men to go the full distance with Mike Tyson on the Liverpool to Birkenhead ferry. Right, I want a nice clean fight, and when the bell rings, come out fighting. Right, here we go. Don't worry about a thing. Just get in there and sock it to him. OK. Where are you going? Get me socks. Don't be silly. <coughs> Thank you. Go on. Get in there. Mm. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. That's it. <coughs> hey. Great master stroke that pulling his shorts down. I was using them to pull myself up. Oh. Hey. When you get in there, give him your old one-two. I did, but he kept giving me his old three-four. Can't you throw the towel in? Why? To trip him up. Don't be silly. Come on, get in there, get in. Oh. Yes. That's it. Yay. Yes. Yes. Hey, where are you going? I've really got him worried now. Yeah? I told him you weren't going to pay him. Oh, that's all right then. Oh. Hey! Uh, uh, he's back to the studio. Oh. 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 Hey. And there you are then. I hope this programme has been an education to you. It certainly has to me. Yes. And that brings us only one more thing to do, and that is to show you the before and after photographs. Oh, good. Here we are. Right. There's before right. and after. Hey, Paul. Oh. They look exactly the same to me. Hey. And there we are, then. That brings us to the Spot the Difference competition. <sighs> uh, pretty tough one this week, I'm sure you'll agree. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we've got time for, so goodbye. Goodbye. You got out of that one nicely. Do you think so? Yes. You don't think they noticed? Nobody will have noticed. Here, do you want one of these cream cakes now? Can I have one now? Oh, aye, they're nice oh, then. Oh, great. Go on, have a try it, one of them. Lovely. Mm. 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 Mm.